We have been getting a ton of questions on how our recirculating shower has been performing. Stand by for the truth and a three month update. Eleven months last year building out our 2019 Sprinter van and probably our most unique feature is our recirculating shower. And this video is actually probably the most requested that we get from you our viewers. How is it working out for us? Yeah everybody wants to know how is it going? How is it performing? So today we're going to tell you. So in this video we're going to give you a quick review of our system. We're going to share with you what's been going right, what's been going wrong and that we need to change and some of our maintenance procedures. We previously filmed two videos about the installation of the recirculating shower. We're gonna go ahead and leave those links below in case anyone's interested. So on to the overview. First off, the system starts off with a seven and a half gallon water tank. From the holding tank, it goes through the pre-filter, the pump, and then through the accumulator. The first stage in the filtration process, it goes through a 50 micron spin down filter. From the spin down, the water then gets carried to our three big blue filters. The first one being a 20 micron filter, the second being a 10 micron filter, and the final filter being a 5 micron charcoal filter. That's a lot of times to say filter. The water then comes from the blue filters into the van into a UV light which kills bacteria and viruses. The water then comes out clean out the shower head onto yours truly or Sandy, goes back into the holding tank and the process starts all over again. Now we're going to talk about the good of our system, the bad, and our plan to fix the bad stuff. First up, the good. So the absolute best thing about this shower is that our hydronic heating system allows us to take an endless sh hot shower. So if we want to stand in here for 30 minutes, we can absolutely do that. We absolutely feel clean after taking the shower. We were a little concerned, you know, you're reusing water and recirculating it and there was that concern that we wouldn't feel clean, but we absolutely feel clean when using it. And overall, the system works exactly as intended with maybe one little minor change that we'll discuss in the bath. So, okay, now is the moment that you've all been waiting for. Um, what is not going well with our shower system? Uh, what will we change? What do we plan to change? The bad stuff, the um, juicy stuff, the things that you're here for. So we absolutely want to be transparent about this. Um, we don't want you to go into this thinking that it's a perfect system. It is not. There is maintenance involved. Um, you have to do some things to have that endless hot shower, but if you want the endless hot shower, we think the extra work is worth it. Um, the one thing we don't want you to think is that you can go into this system taking a shower just like the shower you take at home because you're probably not going to be happy with it. So the first issue that we have is soap filtration. So if you use petroleum based soaps or basically any normal soap or shampoo or conditioner it clogs the filters super early and uh, when we first tried this out we took a total of we were able to eke out six showers, so that's basically three days worth of showers. Yeah, so this was us using all the soap we wanted, all the shampoo we wanted, all the conditioner we wanted, and I tell you what, those filters clog up fast. Why do you have to mention shampoo? Because like you're bald. Oh, okay. <laughs> so they, they clogged up very quickly. Oil and filters just do not mix. Um, we had the suggestion to try adding a tablespoon of Epsom salt per gallon of water. We did that. It still did not help. After several showers, you could just smell the soap in the water. It didn't feel clean. You felt that soapy film and it just didn't work. So what are we doing about the soap? We took a really simple approach to this. We just don't use any. Uh, we actually use the uh, recirculating shower now to wash off. If you don't know by now that we're both ER nurses, there's two things that you need to get clean. So, and that's uh, water and friction, which I challenge you at home next time you take a shower to actually take a washcloth or a loofah, whatever you use to scrub your body, and uh, just hop in the hottest shower that you, that you would like and really scrub yourself down, take your time, you know, hit all the major spots, and when you get out, smell yourself you know give yourself a little pit check you know Ooh, you're disgusting i know i know but uh you'll find that you don't smell bad another thing you can do is use like um norwex they make those silver um, infused washcloths that aren't even meant to use soap to get you clean you could try something like that and then i'm sure you're asking what i do to wash my hair and jed does to 
not wash not my wash hair. His hair. Um, so what I do is after I finish my shower, my hair is wet, I turn off the water, I lather it up and I rinse it in the sink. It takes just like a half a gallon of water to do that. Not ideal, but it works and you have to make compromises living in a van. So um, it's a compromise we're willing to make. With that being said, we haven't given up on soap completely. Uh, we do plan to do a little bit more experimentation. We are going to actually try to use a biodegradable soap like Dr. Bronner's or something like that, um, using small amounts of it and adding that Epsom salt to the water. And we're gonna, that's part of our plan for the future is to see how that might work. So we will do that and then we will probably do another yeah, update. Yeah, you know video. there's another update coming. Yeah, another update video um, in about three months so you can um, see how the changes we're gonna make are working with the shower. The last problem we're gonna talk about is the pre-filter on the pump. Now, kudos to our audience. Uh, Y'all have already called us out on this and uh, this is something that we're going to discuss in a little bit, but uh, the pre-filter is the very, very, very first filter that leaves the tank and we find that it gets clogged often. Yeah, so we're having to rinse it every week, that little, it's a little tiny filter. We're having to rinse that every single week when we change out our water. Um, you know, not a horrible thing. It's really easy to rinse out, but when we start to, we've, we've lost pressure totally and it was just totally, the pump wasn't getting water and it was that pre-filter clog. So it's doing its job to make sure all those big things don't get in the filter. But in retrospect, we should have probably put our spin down filter first in line. So as you come out of the tank, it should have been the spin down filter and then the pre-pump um, filter and the pump. So that is one of our big plans for the future. We are go um, going to be rerouting the tubing so that the um, spin down filter does come first and fingers crossed, hopefully everything will still continue to function well with the pump. Um, but when we were doing our research to put the system together, there were two options. We had seen systems where it was, the water came out and everybody's like, oh, your pre-filter is more than enough to get everything out before it goes to the pump. And there were the people that said, oh no, you need to have that big spin down filter first. And we think we need to have that big yeah, spin down I, I filter think, first. I think we're in the second camp. So 50 micron filter first. So we will be changing that um, and seeing how that does. So again, we will try that out and then in a couple months we'll be able to report back if that actually is more effective in doing the job of filtrating those bigger particles. Okay, so now we're going to move on to how we are maintaining our system. We do daily maintenance or not necessarily daily but after every shower maintenance. We do weekly maintenance and we have a monthly ish maintenance that we do. We'll start with our daily maintenance which is pretty simple. We have a small little filter that sits in our drain that helps collect any hair or bigger particles and so after every shower we clean that out so that it stays nice and clean and then after and this is after each of us takes a shower because we take showers back to back to kind of simplify it. So after we take our showers back to back we continue to run the system in the basically for about five to 10 minutes. That way all the water in the system is clean. So we're essentially not storing dirty water in the tank. So it's gone through the filtration system again after we use it. Now we have seen other systems that have a solenoid valve where they don't actually run the shower head and it just kind of loops through the system. I mean, you could do that too, but this is easy enough. We just close the door and let the shower run for five minutes and it's really not a big deal. Up next is our weekly maintenance. So we start by draining the seven and a half gallon reservoir tank and purging all the water from the system. And then we refill it with fresh water. So there are two ways that we can refill our system. One is we have an adapter on our solenoid valve that allows us to hook directly to a fresh water hose and fill it that way. Or the way that we do 99.9% .9 of the time, which is actually filling a five, six gallon jug and pouring it actually into the shower, which goes directly into the reservoir. <laughs> So like we said, we find that this is the easiest way to fill it. So we just fill up our jug, take off the lid, and we always make sure our solenoid valve is closed because uh, we have... We don't always because we dumped it right back out before, <laughs> but this is super easy. So right now, another part of our weekly maintenance is in is cleaning this little small pre-filter that is before the pump. As you can see, it is, gets pretty gunked up and nasty. So hopefully this won't become an issue once we reroute the spin down filter before the pre-filter. So now we install our 
nice clean uh, pre-filter. And this weekly maintenance takes about 15 to 20 minutes, so it's not really that bad. First thing we do is actually clean the 50 micron spin down filter. And then we move over to the three big blue filters, our 20, 10, and 5 micron filter, and give those a good rinse and just make sure they're in good general repair and they don't smell bad. Okay, so this is the 50 micron. I don't know if you can see it. It's pretty disgusting. I'm gonna hand this over to Sandy and she's gonna put it in our cleaning bucket. Now we're gonna move to our three filters over here. Always have to do like the righty, tidy, lefty, loosey thing. Because it's, it's different when it's upside down. Okay, you can see, kind of filthy. That's the 20 micron. So this is the 10. Yeah, pretty dirty. And our five micron charcoal filter, which is actually pretty clean. Now we also rinse the uh, entire system with a little bit of vinegar and we cycle through so everything gets nice and cleaned out. Uh, we're not quite to our month mark, so we're not gonna do that today, but just to let you know, that's what we do. All right, so the spin down is a totally reusable filter, cleanable, um, cleans up really nicely. This is our 20, which always seems to be the dirtiest of all of our filters. Um, it's We've had this in for about two months, I believe now, um, and it's looking pretty rough, so I think we're gonna go ahead and replace it today. And then this one here is our 10. Uh, I don't know, what do you think about that one? Looking a little rough too? Eh, yeah, a little bit. So we'll probably go ahead and replace that. But the five micron, like I said, it seems to last a lot longer than the other ones. So we're still trying to figure out exactly how long these filters last us, so, um, but yeah, it's looking like these are at two months. I did want to note something though. These are two and a half inch wide filters by 10 inches long. A lot of people use the bigger four and a half inch filters. Of course, bigger filter means bigger filtration space, means they're probably gonna last you a lot longer. So because we went with the smaller filters, I'm not surprised that we may have to change them out every two months. Last step, we took them off. Now we have to put them back on, replace the filters. Okay, there we go. All right, so that is how the recirculating shower is going so far. It's definitely not 100%. Um, I'd say we're 85% happy with it. We've got some adjustments to make. Um, if I had to do it all over again, um, other than the changes that we mentioned that we were gonna make in putting a spin down filter and everything, uh, the shower's actually been really good for us and I would, I would do it again. Yeah, so just just a couple notes. We don't shower every day um, like we did at home. It was just, I know it's disgusting, but we just don't feel the need to. I mean, we you know, if you ask any van lifer, wet, wet wipes, I mean, <laughs> they're your friends. So we, we shower like every other day, every third day, depending how hot and sweaty it is or what kind of activities we're doing. So much room for activities. So much room for activities. So much room. We still, we still <laughs> use wet wipes when we don't shower or whatever, but but sometimes some days we'll shower three days in a row sometimes it'll be three yeah. days before we take a shower so on average we get three showers each a week off of the one tank um we, if you know you get that water that you're washed or drying off after you get out of the shower so sometimes we have to add an extra gallon in um, because we only have the seven gallon tank uh, but we're very happy with it it allows us to be clean it allows us to stay out and boondock longer um, and we just very rarely have to look for a shower to shower in and that's mostly we call spa day spa days that's right so where we can actually use all of our shampoos and conditioners and soaps like we can like just we literally bathe in she makes fun of me because i'm bald i mean it is I don't... it's funny okay. he's, he's so bald um but yeah so Go ahead and drop all of your questions in uh, the comments below if you have any other questions. If you have some suggestions on how we can continue to improve the um, system, by all means, we'd love to hear those as well. Um, it's just a work in progress. It's gonna take us some time to fine tune it. I don't think anybody out there has perfected this system yet. Yeah, the so, recirculating shower, despite what you may hear, is not a magic bullet, and it does require a little bit of work, but like I said, overall, we're happy with yeah. it. And in the end, you just need to decide if it's worth the work to you. Like if you're willing to put that work in it to ha have those hot showers and to be able to be out more and not depend on public facilities. So, uh, which 
we happen to be okay with. We don't feel like it's that much work. So like I said, daily maintenance takes five minutes to kind of clean up the filter, the filter in the tub. Weekly maintenance takes us about 15 to 20 minutes. And our monthly maintenance when we're doing everything, flushing the system out and then refilling it again, that probably takes us 30, 40 minutes, so 45 minutes yeah. max. So it's, it's really not a big time consumption thing. So yeah, you just have to decide if you want to spend the time and the maintenance on it or not. So. All right guys, so now's the time to like the video. If you're not subscribed, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. And that's gonna do it for this video. We're not there yet. Oh, we're not there? I also wanted to mention to stay tuned, we do plan on probably doing another update video in three months. So you, that's why you should hit that subscribe button. So if you want to see like kind of how the changes work out for us, I think that's it. Go. Okay. So that's going to do it for the end of this. <laughs> that's going to do it for this video, guys. And until next time, stay, stay wonderful. wonderful. Call it a day.